my pleasure to welcome you to Shots and Awed. Are you ready for action? Let me introduce your first fight into the red corner. James Sutherland! Obviously wearing grey red. Is he wearing a shirt? And he's walking off by just fighting out the red corner. James Sutherland! Oh, great, so they're both in grey red. This is a semi-pro lightweight contest, fourth and the three four-minute rounds. And in the blue corner, he weighs in at 70 kilograms. He is fighting out the ground game gym, and this is his debut in the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Sob Stevenson! And in the red corner, he weighs in at 70 kilograms. He is fighting out a South Coast submission, and this is also his debut in the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for James Sutherland! Hello everybody and welcome to Shock and Awe. My name's Lloyd Clarkson and joining me here in the commentary booth today is Chris Khan. We are uh, here in Fairham today in Hampshire. We've got 12 bouts of a uh, mixture of MMA, kickboxing and K1. Our first bout on the card. We've got James Sutherland. James is fighting at the local gym, SCS South Coast Submissions. Sutherland is wearing the grey and white shorts with the tap out logo on. His opponent, Tom Stevenson from Team Higher Stan. He's in the longer grey and red shorts, currently on his back, pushed up against the cage wall. So we're off to an explosive start. What do you think so far, Chris? Stevenson's looking good so far. He's in control on the top. Posturing up now. He's looking good. He's got Sutherland with his back against the cage. Bit of ground pound. Don't think we're going to go much further with this one. Lightning quick arm bar there. So now we have got. That's nice He's... and deep. You can see the arm is well buried in the groin there. Now, what we're looking for is we're going to be looking for Sutherland to thrust his hips forward to finish that arm bar. I must say, Stevenson knows what he's doing there. He was trying to escape, but that was. Too far, too deep, too soon. So that's an impressive win there for Sutherland. So, very quick win for the home fighter. They've got to be happy with that. Good start to their show. Sorry, mate, I said can, not can. And your winner, Actually, after 59 wrong. seconds of the very first round, by armbar, James Sutherland! Let's give it up for your runner up, Mr. Tom Stevenson.
And please welcome his opponent fighting out to the red corner, Hanji Bout number two. In the red corner, we've got Andy Good. In the blue corner, we've got Matt Simpson. Both boys look quite hyped up, ready to fight. Lloyd, what are you thinking? Yeah, both guys put on a very impressive display coming into the cage today. So we've got Simpson fighting out of Team Hyastan, and we've got Andy Good, who is uh, fighting out of the SCS gym, the homeboys. It looks like it's going to be a fast start. Yeah, this is particularly interesting for me, Chris. This is 84 kilos, this is middleweight, it's my weight category. So I'm always keeping an eye out for potential opponents, as you may say. Of course. So there we see Simpson coming in with a barrage of kicks. Nice right hand landing from Good. A little bit cagey to begin with. Uh, there we see Good is quick, uh, very quick to counter strike. Not seeming too keen to lock up at this stage. Nice right hand from Good. There uh, we see Good's got one overhook as he's back in the cage. Loses the overhook. So Simpson takes him down, but not a wise move. No, indeed, as he went down, it was a little bit sloppy. Head down, wasn't really looking at his opponent. And uh, Good took the advantage of that position. And as I say that, Simpson has a very good scramble there, nearly out of the position. So we see Good, he's in the half guard position. The, gu the half guard is open, so he should really be looking to pass instead of strike. I'd like to see him pass that guard, posture up in a mount, and then really do some damage. Nice ground and pound from Andy Good. That is, it's very impressive, very powerful. I really would, that guard is wide open, there we see. Very, very accurate with that right hand as well. He is, yeah, Simpson closing that half guard now. He really needs to start thinking about shrimping his way out and claiming full guard. So he's, he's got one butterfly hook in, so maybe we're going to be seeing a sweep. He kicks and away. And Simpson makes it back to his feet. Excellent, both guys back standing. Simpson coming in with a barrage of blows again, and there we see that head's very low. He's prone to a guillotine, and there we go, it's on. Straight away, Good goes for the guillotine. He's got half guard control on the body of Simpson. If he can pull the hips of Simpson down, he can finish from this position. I've got a very good view, and that is incredibly tight. He's going to struggle to get out of there, Lloyd. It's an uncomfortable position to be in. Now, the key to this position is actually not to hold the head. The key is to hold the hips, control the hips of your opponent. And you can see Good is doing that. He's got the, the half guard position, pulling the hips he down. He slipped the head out. Excellent work there from Simpson. That's, that's impressive. Now let's see if he can... Looking now for some ground a pound of his own. There we go. Simpson's now taking the full mount position. This could be devastating for Andy Good. Now, Good has gone for the head again, but with no control over the hips of Simpson, it won't be as effective. He's looking for a turn there. See his hips coming out to one side. So, Simpson's head is free. I've been very impressed with his ground and pounds. 
today, Chris. What do you think yourself? Both, both lads ground and pound in this fight are doing very well. Simpson's actually coming into his own now. This is I dangerous think now. it's this all over dangerous. for Andy Good. He's got to intelligently defend himself. Oh, excellent. Who'd have thought? Now we see a, a reversal. He's going for a rear choke. Now the hooks go in, and that's on quick. Excellent. And a very, and a very good win then for Matt Simpson. Andy Good's got to be gutted with that. Good fight from both lads, though. Well done. So, fight three. It's good. Oh, that was all right, actually. For... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your winner, after three minutes and 41 seconds of the very first round, by way of real naked show, Matt Simpson! Yeah. Let's yeah. give it up for your runner-up, Mr. Andy Boone. Yeah. Shock and awe fight number three then. In the red corner we've got Josh Smeaton fighting from Shaolin, Aaron Rocket. Aaron Rocket, I don't actually know anything about this lad. He looks in good condition, could be a good fight. Josh Smeaton, I've seen him several times before. He's got a few, few losses on his record, but haven't spoken to him in the dressing room pre-fight. I know he's here, he's been training hard, and he's looking for his second win. So. Good luck, fellas. Let's get it on. Now, of course, this, uh, this next bout is uh, four under K1 rules, so that's three by three minute rounds. And you know, it's different gloves, different style of shorts. This is more predominantly stand up. Chris, this is uh, mainly your background, uh, pro kickboxing your background, so this is more your kind of forte here. That's right. Nice left hook there from Smeaton. Mm, in the clinch there, nice knees coming in. Difference with K1 is that we do see a lot of clinch work, a lot of fighting from the clinch. It'd be nice to see the lads working in behind the front tee and a few jabs in there as well. So slightly cagey start to begin with here. Nice leg, nice leg kicks from Aaron Rocket. However, he is dropping his hands when he throws those legs. Yeah, I've got to be honest, I did notice that earlier, Chris. That left hook as well is working very well for Smeaton. Yeah. 
that was a lightning quick, uh, lightning quick right hook there from Rocket. Impressive. Nice, shot. nice head movement from Josh Smeaton. It's not really getting caught too much. Good, nice uppercut there. Nice Little high head kick. kick. There. Nice right hand again, and left kick as well. Oh, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. Keep it up, Josh. He's going to take the eight count. Aaron Rocket isn't liking that. I think he's been caught in the throat. He uh, he did look a little bit rocked from that uh, high kick about 30 seconds a minute ago, something like that. So Josh could be looking for his finish now. Uh, we can see Rocket there, staying nicely out of range. That's good movement there. It's a little bit different, obviously, for these boys fighting in the cage. No ropes to come back off. Works a little bit differently. There's not so much bit, so much give in the cage as there is off the ropes. Yeah. Hands could be a little bit higher from both of the lads. Yeah, I must say that's very noticeable at the moment. Both have got a very sloppy, very low guard. It does. There we see Rocket goes down. That was that was the left hand, but it was a little bit of a slip and a push there, I think. Now, one thing I've noticed, Smeaton is looking uh, particularly a bit more revitalised. Uh, Rocket looks like he is tiring slightly. Now, with the short rounds that we have in K1, the fast pace, that's bound to pay dividends. There we go, end of round so, one. Round one. With two knockdowns for Josh Smeaton. Obviously, the smart money's on him for the first round. So, round two then. Josh Smeaton needs now to capitalise on his good first, uh, first round start. Not really sure what Aaron Rocket can do in this one. He certainly needs to keep his hands up. There we can see Smeaton can smell and taste blood. He's going in for that KO finish he was talking about earlier. And uh, I've got to say, he looks more fresh. He looks like he wants it a bit more. Those knees, if they land, that's gonna that's gonna take uh, Aaron Rocket out. Oh, let's not rule Rocket out though. I mean, he's coming back with he's got some good movement, and he's coming back with some nice counters. And you know those counters. He's... Nice Superman punch there. Excellent. Yeah, that's. Let's be fair. For his debut fight, Rocket is doing well. He's fighting an experienced opponent in Josh Smeaton. Absolutely, yep. He's uh, certainly got more fights under his belt. So here we see. This is where it's going to be uh, a bit different to normal. Obviously, normally, normally you're in the ropes, so you can only really clinch like that in the corner. There we and see. lovely left hook there. Smeaton's really unleashing a barrage of blows now. Chops the leg down nicely as well. That was excellent timing there from Smeaton. You saw he waited for the high kick, saw it coming. And a uh, tiny little instep kick just, just took the leg out from underneath Rocket. So he's uh, definitely the smarter fighter here strategy-wise. He's going for the points. So Rocket, Rocket now moving around. He's backing off. I think Josh Smeaton has hurt him quite a lot now. And he's broken his heart a little bit. Uh, it, it will have a mental effect on you. It can go two ways. If you know that you're losing on points, you can either go all out or it can break you mentally. There we see, he's got him in the side of the cage and there's that barrage of blows. He's still got plenty of fuel left in the tank. Beautiful, beautiful right knee to the midsection there from Smeaton very, as well. Very nearly landed a right hook on referee Andy Walker there. I'm sure he's used to that though. So there we see another further standing eight count. And that's it. 
That's it, game over. Aaron Josh Smith and then back to winning ways. Well done, Josh. Aaron Rocket, good fight, good debut. We'll see you again. Another envelope. Oh, hold on, hold on. I can, These I aren't can. the ones with money in, are they? No. <laughs> well await semi pro three fours. Two minutes and seven seconds of the second round. Your winner, Josh Smith. <laughs> Let's give it up for your winner of the That right leg kick him well. Ladies and oh. gentlemen, please welcome your next fighter into the cage. Oh, in the blue corner, <laughs> Nick Miller! He's probably about some 20 feet. I mean, you've got all those six at sock, yeah. but no one's here for you. Yeah. So and, and all your, but all your fighters are here, so that's the main thing. None of your yeah. fighters got stuff in it. Exactly. Blue yeah. corner, so. no, really late. And please welcome his opponent in the red corner, Jason Gillis! So that's Miller, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so he, he's the lad from uh, Canada. This is a semi-pro welterweight contest scheduled for three four-minute rounds. And in the blue corner, he weighs in at 77 kilograms. He is fighting on the Sukhothai MMA and has a record of one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mickey Miller! Right, Sukhothai definitely born with, yeah? yeah? And in the red corner, he weighs in at 77 kilograms. He is fighting out his South Coast submissions, and this is his Cody Elkins. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Jason Jules! Okay, so next up, we've got a welterweight battle of the South Coast gyms. We have got Jason Gillis. Uh, he's fighting out of South Coast Submissions, the local gym, as you can tell by the spectators. Now, he's in the red corner. He's wearing the tight red trunks. Uh, Jason actually hails from Canada. His opponent, Mickey Miller, he's fighting out of the Sukhothai gym, which is based only down the road in Bournemouth. And he's in the black and camo cage steel shorts. Now, both guys have got a sound stand-up background here. Excellent. There we see Gillis go straight for the takedown. Gillis's background is freestyle wrestling and taekwondo, so he could strike and take down and grapple, which is a dangerous combination for MMA as we see him back his opponent, Miller, into one of the corners. Miller does manage to claim half guard. He's working for full guard. Gillis isn't giving it to him, so he's going to have to settle with half guard. Now, Miller himself has actually got a, a 3 2 0 boxing record. He's in full mount now. Yeah, that's a dangerous position to be in in the first minute of the round. So, Gillis in mount position. Now, here we see Miller has given his back up to escape. It's a risky strategy. Very risky to do this. Now, we see Gillis is going for the choke, but he hasn't got his hooks in. If he hasn't got the hooks in, Miller might be able to shake him off. He's almost got the hooks in though. Miller's doing the right thing. He's got his backside up in the air. Now, as I say that, Gillis is flattening him out. So this is now dangerous. Gillis needs to get that second hook in. There he repostures. 
That right foot will just about bury it. There we go, he's flattened him out. This is now very dangerous position to be in. He's the, I didn't quite see how he did that, but he did well to get out. But Gillis is straight into the mount position. And he's got some heavy ground and pound there. And Mickey Miller somehow has managed to get himself back to his feet. Excellent. That is a very good scramble there from Miller. Here we see that wrestling doing, background. Doing well not to be taken down again. There we see referee is having a, a subtle word, trying to get him to not grab the cage. Obviously, you're not allowed to do that. Now, this is a dangerous position to be in. Good knees there from Jason Gillis. That wrestling background of Gillis, you do not want to be pressed against the cage wall because he will take you down. So Gillis has got the underhooks. He's looking for that leg there. We, we can really see that wrestling background coming into its own now. Excellent times and ease there. So here we see Miller trying to wrap on a guillotine. We see Gillis going for that single leg takedown. Somehow Miller, cat-like balance there, stays on his feet. Now Miller instigates the takedown. He's looking to wrap that guillotine on. That is on tight. He's got the body control. You can see Gillis thinking about tapping there. That was so close. We saw his hand raise. He was thinking of tapping there. And he breaks his head three. This is turning out to be an excellent fight. Gillis posturing up from the guard position, raining down some devastating blows. Great right hands there from Gillis. Ah, here we go. Referee Andy Walkers called a stop to the fight. Mickey Miller, he didn't look like he knew what was going on there. He was rocked. And the referee is there for the both combatants' safety is paramount. So if he can see that, he will stop the competition. Mickey, Mickey Miller's devastated there. But you've got to say, Jason Gillis, good win. Well done. Very impressive stuff there. Looking forward to seeing both of these guys in the future. It was a right rip roarer. It's good, isn't it? Let's go for another one. Because huh? he was laying a brown pound out, and the guy wasn't even looking at him. He's looking at the side of the cage, just like this. So I yeah. stopped him. Right, so, to be fair. He, he can't really complain about it. He weren't with it at all. He's already done high school wrestling and that. Oh, yeah, well, that's his background. Did uh, you just see him there when you had him guillotine in the fence? Yeah. And he's got a tight spot guillotine on, but he's looking for the single leg. Yeah. And who said men can't multitask? So, K1 next. Careless and he was leg broken in February, that's why he's doing kickboxing with us. Right. Rather than K1. This is his first fight. And his opponent fighting us for red corner. A beat! Mahmoud! Hey, one of my lads, this is my lad. Yeah, no, you've got Kev Sims here, haven't you? Yeah, no, he's doing the cage. He's door just doing the door, yeah. Alright, yeah. oh, that's cool, right. Oh, they're all wearing bled red and bloody black. And in the blue corner, he weighs in at 69 kilograms. He is fighting under Team Shaolin and has a kickboxing record of one win and no losses. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Joe Pryor! And in the red corner, he stands in at 69 kilograms. He is fighting under DK Shake and has a mixed martial arts record of no losses. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for a beat, Mamu!
So, fight number five here in Fareham. We have Abid Mahmood in the red corner with the Fairtex shorts on. And Joe Pryor fighting out the blue corner from Shaolin. Kickboxing rules today here. And we've got Abid Mahmood coming back from a broken leg earlier on this year. And he's looking to get his first win in front of his home crowd. Absolutely. Now, both guys have got losses on their records, so they will both be. This adds something to the fight, I think, uh, when both guys are looking for that win a little bit more than you would be normally. So, we could expect to see fireworks here tonight. So, from Joe Pro, we've got the low, very low Shaolin sort of kung fu style guard going on there, whereas Mahmoud has his hands up. Stepping off, just gauging out his opponent at the moment. Some flashy kicks going to be coming from Joe Pryor from the looks of it. But I'm a bit worried that he's got that left hand real low. Oh, nice left hook though. Right, and we should see a nice fast pace. This is uh, kickboxing rules, so it's four two minute rounds. So often a very fast pace, a lot of shots. And Joe Pryor is able to punch, obviously, and kick from orthodox and southpaw stances. Nice leg kick there, although we're not in a leg kick fight. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't uh, Mahmoud's bad leg. So it's going to be different for the, both these lads fighting in the cage. Again, no ropes, no spring coming back. It's a little bit different. Abid needs to work behind his jab or some kicks. Well, I say, Chris, this is a very peculiar stance that we're seeing from Joe Pryor. Again, again, this is, this is more Kung Fu. Um, not really seen it in the ring too much. It's interesting. Big haymaker there. Yeah, big overhand bolo punch there from Mahmood. And uh, devastating punches when they land, but if you can see it coming, it does give you time to move out of the way. So, Abid now is needing to throw some kicks. So, first round, I'm going to have to go with Joe Pryor on that round. Uh, not enough kicks from Abid Mahood. He looks like he's struggling to get into gear so far in this fight. Let's see what he's got for the second round. So, Joe Pryor is going to be looking now to take the second round, work him behind some long kicks and then follow him with punches. Abid is just going to need to get in there and crowd him, I think. He seems reluctant to throw kicks, that's probably because of his broken leg. But he does need to get in there and get some shots off. Now I'm just going to point out the blatantly obvious here. We've got Pryor does seem to have a, a specific reach advantage over Mahmood. So if I was Mahmood, I'd be looking to come in, do some damage close. And he does. He's like a little pit bull there, unleashing a barrage of blows. Great bit of action there. A little bit, little bit untidy in places, but this is what it's all about. There we go. There we go. Abid now is getting into his groove. Maybe could do with calming it down a little bit. Oh, big right hand. There we go. We can hear the corner of Mahmoud advising him to go for straight punches. He's coming in with those big overhand bolos. There we see another one. Uh, devastating if they land, but you can see him coming a mile away. So, Abby, straight punches, straight punches now. It's worth noting that there is no kick counter here, so Abid Mahoud is not going to have to worry about that. There he goes with that overhand right again. Although Joe Pryor now knows it's coming. He's looking out for it. He's going to go back to his original game plan, start working behind the kicks, or that's what he should do. Needs to watch, needs to watch out for turning his back. Absolutely, Chris. I mean, this is where experience shines through now. Second round, you're starting to read your fighter a bit more. That was an excellent kick there, landed by Mahmood. Now, obviously, with the kickboxing rules, we don't see as much clinch work. Oh, 
I must say, I would really like to see Mahmood vary his style a bit now. He's relying on that overhand bolo punch. And there we see again. There we go again, that, although he is having some success with it. Okay, so round two. This fight's really shaping up now. We're gonna have we're gonna have one with Pryor and one with Mahood. So it's all hanging on the third round. So, just to correct myself there, this is actually a four-round fight, not a three-round fight. So, we're one apiece at the moment. It could go either way. You know they won't record that bit, do you? <laughs> So round three, Joe Pryor now needs to work behind those long kicks and a few jabs. Maybe stick with one stance, see how he gets on. I think we know what's going to be coming from Abid. Straight in. Oh, there goes that overhand right again. And again. Hey, he's kicking now. Very good. Excellent low kick to the body. Uh, there we see. So long as they're punching in the clinch, they are allowed to Which... clinch for a short period. We've just got a little bit of a nosebleed there from Joe Pryor, but I think he's I think he's alright. I think he's alright. Well, we're just gonna have a brief medical stoppage here. Medics are just gonna come in and uh, inspect Pryor's nose there, make sure everything's okay. Obviously safety is paramount here. one of those big over round rights. <laughs> or it might, it, might, it might have been right round us actually. Possibly. <laughs> so Joe Pryor's cleaning up all right now. Looks like they've got the nose almost stopped bleeding. I don't think it's going to stop him. Back on then, back into round three. Still plenty to go in this round. Joe now needs to keep his hands up a little bit and keep it long. I think we know what Abby's going to do. So be nice, be nice now if these lads can tidy it up a little bit. Yeah, quite literally, I think Mahmood is going to have tasted blood there. It uh, often he does a lot for your uh, mental state of mind for the fight. When you see your opponent bleeding and have a medical stoppage. Some nice devastating uppercuts there from Mahmood. It almost looks as though Joe Pryor may have a little bit of an MMA background because it almost looks as though he's trying to go in for the takedown. Great right roundhouse kick there to the head. Now we see Mahmood is doing the smart thing. He can see where he's hurt Pryor and he is aiming every single shot at that area. So Pryor's bleeding again. So he just gets his head down and runs flying in there. He's certainly he's, got heart. He's getting some success though. No, I've got to be honest, if I was Pryor here, I would be looking for a counter strike. 
when Mahmood comes in, he does leave that, his chin sticking out, leans right into those overhand rights. So Pryor needs to keep it long. There we see Joe Pryor unable to continue. The damage done earlier in round two to his nose is, uh, is too much. Right at the end of round three, so that's a, a nice win there for Abid Mahmood. Abid Mahmood has got his first win. Well done, Abid. Joe Pryor, good fight. Be interesting to see you again. Jamie Skinner, I recognise that name. What weight are we here? Under 73, so this is a catch weight. It'd be like the first time he has a drink, if he drinks, in like three years, he won't. Yeah. You're straight in there, aren't you? What have I got? Anything, no, anything healthy? I'm just trying to work out what's what. That's got to be chicken of some description, isn't it? I can smell prawns somewhere. Really? Or maybe that's just... Maybe uh, that's just her. <laughs> and the referee has called a stop to the contest <laughs> for your winner in the red corner, oh, Abid Mahmood! Pay hey, good money for that to drop the DVD. Let's give it up for it's your winner, John Pryor. It's all salad stuff. There's a couple of egg ones if you want one. Yeah, there's pretty much mayonnaise in most of them. Quickly, egg one is probably going to be the best for you. He nearly bled, nearly bled on my sandwich then. What? Stop it, saying it, because I will say it on the microphone. And she's yeah, terrible yeah, for it, right? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your next fighter into the cage. So in the blue corner, Louise Finocchio! Welcome his opponent in the red corner, Jamie Skinner! Is that what you call it? So these are catch weight then, yeah? Must be, under 73. Yeah. This is a semi-professional light welterweight contest scheduled for three four-minute rounds. And in the blue corner, he weighed in at 73 kilograms. He is fighting under D'Souza BJJ. And this is his debut in the cage. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Luis Finocchio. <laughs> and in the red corner, he weighed in at 73 kilograms. He is fighting under South Coast submissions. He has a mixed martial arts record, one win and one losses. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands in the air. Yeah. Jamie Skinner! So, here we go. Jamie Skinner in the red. Louis Finocchio from D'Souza Jiu-Jitsu in the blue. The crowd have warmed up nicely. Lloyd, what do you think on this one? Well, this is certainly going to be a battle. With uh, The fans are uh, obviously going to side with the local lad, that's Skinner, fighting uh, out of the SCS gym. Although Louis Finocchio has brought some of his own as well. He has indeed. Now, uh, Finocchio fighting out under the uh, legendary Alex D'Souza. Uh, D'Souza BJJ, so uh, we would expect his ground game and takedowns to be uh, top-notch. Don't know a great deal about Skinner. And I'm right, it is explosive. They are straight in. And we get a lovely view here in the commentary box as the guys uh, scoot around. There we go. So that's uh, D'Souza initiates the takedown, the first we're gonna, takedown. We're going to be watching Finocchio. And the second takedown goes to D'Souza. Alex has already told me that Finocchio is a BJJ purple belt. So we're imagining he's going to be very good on the ground. Yeah, purple belt's an incredibly high grade to get in BJJ. And there we see D'Souza really dominating. He's got the mount position. He's pinned Skinner against the side of the cage. Barrage of elbows. 
barrage of elbows and shots, a couple of them working their way around the back of the head of Skinner. Here the referee just uh, warning D'Souza off there. That is an illegal shot. Posturing up. Nice hammer fist there from Finocchio as well. Uh, Skinner really is in a bit of trouble here. He's, uh, he's giving it a good go though. A couple of brute attempts there from Skinner. And there goes that hammer fist again. It's looking dangerous for Skinner now. There we see D'Souza has backed him right into the pillar of the cage there. This is a dangerous position to be in. He's got a very high mount position. There's not a great deal Skinner can really do. He's offering his he's back. He's got the arm. He's trying to put the armbar on. Here, are we, are we going to see a legendary D'Souza armbar? I'm sure they've drilled this many a time. Now Skinner has managed to break free, but his arm is stuck. There we see this. In goes that hammer fist again from Finocchio. Sorry, I keep calling him D'Souza. It's not D'Souza. You could be confused by watching him. It is, in fact, Finocchio. He's working that armbar. That's deep. That's deep, and that's straight on. Skinner will do very well if he can escape that. And there we and go. That's tapped. on. So, first round armbar. There we go, then. First fight, first win for Louis Finocchio. Good win for the Bournemouth boy.